Welcome, many Collins here for Bruce Monroe. Today we're going to be creating this baking theme card. Now let's go over the products I use. We're using our new mixed media stencil called Kitchen Clutter. And it has a nice variety of kitchen gadgets, bowls, and etc. It's uh, a 6x6 six six stencil. We'll be using this with our embossing ink and our alabaster embossing powder. So it is going to be a nice white embossing powder. We'll be using our new stamp set called Fre Baked Fresh and we'll be using this cake here, the little um, mm -hmm, pear and a leaf. And we'll be using our embossing ink and uh, Raven embossing powder. We'll also be stamping this sentiment that reads happiness is homemade. <clears throat> we'll be using aqua pigments, we'll be using our aqua pigment mat and our stick and stamp mat. So for aqua pigments we have a variety of colors here. I'll quickly go over them and then I will make sure to link them below for you. It'll be easier. So we have brown, green, peach, yellow green, white and finally some gray i know that's a lot of them but like i said i'll have them listed and linked below for you as well as the other products i use let me get these out of our way and i'll go over the paper we'll be using i have a scrap piece of light green textured cardstock from my stash a piece of watercolor cardstock i normally use the aqua pigment watercolor paper but I'm out of it so I'm using um, Canson so no actually Strathmore sorry I have 110 pound craft 80 pound medium green and a card base made from not your mama's card stock I have some sequins here I have a variety of colors because I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use a piece of burlap and burlap ribbon and some twine in white and green baker's twine so let's jump into it I'm going to bring in our stick and stamp mat remove the protective layer place our card stock down that's the craft card stock and again that's 110 pounds I'm going to place our stencil on top and then I'm just going to go with the easy method of you know dabbing our ink directly to the paper through the stencil so as you can see as the ink goes through the the images get darker watercolor this is embossing ink and also it gives a nice um, watermark design if you want it so let's say I just wanted to make these stay that way then I would just heat set this and then you would have a darker craft on a lighter craft and you'll know you'll see what I mean once I remove this stencil but we'll be embossing on this what I didn't show is that I did use some anti-static powder on my craft paper before I started I'm sorry I forgot to show that on camera so you see how it, well now it looks a shade darker. If you just wanted that, you would just now heat set without adding any embossing powder. But I want these images to pop, so I'm using the alabaster embossing powder, which will give us a nice white on craft look. So I'm, I put some alabaster embossing powder. I'm going to use my um, mm -hmm, clothespin to hold my cardstock while I heat set it. And you know it's set because it goes from grainy to nice and smooth. So from matte to glossy as well. So that's when you know your embossing powder is completely set. So we're almost done. I'm going to get those last few in there. And I, I heat set from front and back to try to minimize as much of the warping. So I'm going to bring in my stamping platform. I have another stick and stamp mat in my stamping platform to hold any small pieces like the one we have here down for stamping. The magnets are holding down my um, mat, not my paper. The mat is holding down my paper. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and grab our images. We have the cake, the little pear, and that little leaf. I'm going to go ahead and put those down. And I did put anti-static powder. You kind of saw me quickly with my brush doing that 
um, again onto the, the cardstock. Again, this is Strathmore watercolor. We do have aqua, pig aqua pigment watercolor cardstock. However, I'm out of it, so I grabbed what I had on hand. But I will link the aqua pigment in the description box below. So I went ahead and used the embossing ink, and you're going to see it looks like nothing's on the paper. But once you uh, place the embossing powder on top, those images start to pop through. I'm going to tap off any excess. Put away the embossing powder so I can heat set these images with my heat tool. So I'm going to do the same thing front and back. I go from grainy to smooth. Once it's all smooth, we know it's all set. Then I'll set that to the side because I'm going to bring in my stamping platform once again because we're going to stamp our sentiment. Do the same thing, stick it on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This time I showed you on screen, which I normally don't do because it's I don't want that anti-static powder on my sticky mat because it'll unstick it, but I was going pretty quickly here. I'm going to do the sentiment here, which is happy is homemade. I stamped my sentiment. I'm going to put some Raven Detail embossing powder on here. And now we're done with all the embossing. So I'm going to heat set this. Once that's done, then we can move on to watercoloring our images. I'm going to set that to the side along with our background. So here are all of our embossed um, images and sentiment. So now we're going to watercolor using our aqua pigments. I'm going to bring in my pigment palette and I'm going to put a drop of each of the colors I'll be using. So that's green and yellow green, peach and brown. Or brown and then peach I should say. I'll use the white and gray in a little bit. I'm not really worried about those yet. So to do this since I already have the embossed image it easily holds in all of my colors. So I start by adding a painting with clean water with just clean water and then I drop a little bit of the pigment in there. Aqua pigments are super saturated so they're nice and strong and bright and vivid. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to paint first with clean water and then I go ahead and pick up some of the pigment and I'm able to spread it throughout so I don't have to continuously pick up more pigment. Now I'm going to move on to the top layer which I'm going to use the peach colored for. So for the bottom part of our cake which is the more done part of our cake I use the brown. For the top I'm using the peach which will give us a nice two-tone effect to our cake. And I did the same for our uh, pear and our leaf. I put the darker green towards the bottom and the lighter green towards the top. And I gave us that nice gradient two-tone effect. So now we're going to do our plate. I'm going to put a little drop of the gray and a little tiny drop of the white. We don't need much of it. We're just going to color in our plate and add a little shadowing to where the cake sits on our plate. For the shadowing, I'm going to use the gray, but really watered down. And then for the plate, I'm just going to accentuate that white plate by adding some white aqua pigment, which is great because the, the cardstock is not quite white, um, the watercolor. It's just like a little off-white, so adding the white makes it really pop. All right, so now I'm going to do only, I'm going to start fussy cutting these images. Now, these images have coordinating dies. I do not have them, but they are available. I'm just going to fussy cut these and then I'm going to use my memento marker to rub across the edge of these so you don't have that white cardstock showing through. I'm going to repeat that for all of our images. So now all of our images are cut and I have that marker run through. I have all the components for my card here. I have my layering cardstock, my card base, my um, embossed top layer which I'm trimming down here to four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to adhere our little piece of burlap. I'm going to use some tear tape on the back and some a barely art glue. I place my tear tape on the back of the panel and I put a tiny bit of barely art glue around the edge here of this burlap. Not a lot because I don't want it to ooze everywhere. I push the, remove the backing from the tear tape, push the burlap onto it. Now, a little once, and I start to put more barely art but then I realized my burlap piece here is not staying down so I add a little bit more stick tape 
but I also need stick tape for my twine so I'm gonna go ahead and add that as well so I'm gonna put some more tear tape and then I'll put my twine on here I only cover the front of the card and then I trim off any of the axis in the back so I don't want to put a lot of bulk on the back of this panel I also don't want to have to put a bunch of um, foam adhesive to help with the bulk of it I put some barely art glue on it and adhere it to the green layering cardstock I'm going to press that and hold that in place I'm going to grab my acrylic blocks just to add a little weight to the sides to make sure that holds I only have that on there for like a minute or so and then um, that gives me enough time to clear away things I'm not needing then I'm going to go ahead and adhere this front panel to our card base once I have that I can now remove the backing off of the foam tabs that I put behind our cake and I get this cake situated I want to get it in the center but I want to just to hold down a little bit of that twine I have foam tape behind our pear as well and as for our leaf I just add a little adhesive and tuck it behind our plate just peeking out so I have green on either side of our plate for our sentiment I also put some foam adhesive and I'm going to put it right up here on the top left hand corner and now I went ahead and made the little bow separate and I'm going to adhere it here at first it doesn't stick it sticks more to my finger but after a little applied a little pressure it will stick to the card I'm bringing in the finishing touches which are some sequins I pull off some gold ones and um, lighter green ones to match our pair and I start by adding them around our sentiment and around our images except for I put one little gold one on the actual pair I decide where everybody's gonna go and then I start placing little droplets of uh, barely art glue and adhere them all in place and basically now our card is finished so let's go over again everything we use we use our stick and stamp mat a stick and stamp palette fresh break uh, stamps our stencil which is called kitchen clutter our aqua pigments and embossing powder and embossing ink I'll have everything linked for you in the description box below. I hope you found inspiration. I hope you found some inspiration. Thank you for being here.